Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about how to hire a blog editor. So the time that you need a blog editor is probably not in the beginning when you're starting out. You know, you might be writing the content by yourself initially, but as you start to build out more staff um, and it's not you writing the content anymore or even just, you know, not even just blog content, but other stuff, then you probably need a blog editor. So the question is, how do you go about hiring a blog editor? So the first tip that I'll give is something that Neil and I recommend. I've used Pro Blogger a lot in the past. It's great for writers, but it's also great for finding editors too. You can find the right people that have the right background. Um, you just need to be specific about what you're looking for. And then, you know, give some examples of, um, tell them to give some examples of sites where, you know, they're the managing editor of, and then uh, work off of that. So that's a good starting point. Neil, I don't know where you go to find your editors. So the way I look at editors is, um, to backtrack a bit, whether you're a one-man army or you have a team, the way I look at blog editors, especially if you're doing content you know, in volume, like when I mean volume, at least three posts a week, that's when it really starts becoming worth it. It's about having them streamline the tasks. The tasks that I usually assign them are making sure that you're using the best headlines. So to come up with 10 or 20 variations of the headline, pick the best one. Uh, make sure they're going through the content Make sure it's readable, there's no errors, grammar check, all the image works, links work, etc. The next thing that I have them do is reach out to everyone that you linked out to and send them an email saying like, hey, John, I just want to let you know we're a huge fan of your work, so much so that we even linked out to you in our latest blog post. Click here to check it out. Cheers, X, Y, and Z. P.S. If you shared the posts, it wouldn't just make our day, it would make our year. So you want to send that to everyone that you link out to. Then the next thing that they do is their job is to also schedule it on all the popular social media sites and also plug it in, like let's say into Buffer, so that way you can schedule it for future uh, dates as well. Because once you release an article once, you want to promote it multiple times. And then uh, is there anything I'm forgetting on what else a blog editor really does? I think uh, ultimately they're they're just, uh, you know, they're wrangling all the content. They're making sure that the stuff comes out. And they're making sure that it, it's it's correct. Um, it's it's stuff ultimately that you know if you're creating, you probably don't want to be doing it. They you just need to be really organized people at the end of the day. So I mean, I think we can go deeper into it, but I, I think I can cap it off with a, a few more questions that I'd ask uh, editors too. You know, there's a lot of tools out there, so I'm interested in how they organize things, right? Um, whether it's you know they're just used to spreadsheets, are they using Trello? Are they using something uh, more like CoSchedule or Smartsheet? I want to know what their process is because ultimately they're going to be driving this thing, and if they're going to be driving this thing, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, they come with the habits that are ingrained within them, so they might be driving the entire process, or you might hand them something. But ultimately, if I'm going to hire somebody, I'm hoping that they can just take the entire thing off me and just run with it. Um, so that's one thing to to consider. And then uh, the other side, you know, I just mentioned being organized earlier, you know, uh, maybe they can send a screenshot of what, you know, their, uh, their content calendar looks like, uh, or, you know, maybe even what their calendar looks like too. How, they, how did they go about wrangling people and making sure that people hit deadlines? And um, yeah, that's basically it at a high level. Neil, do you have anything else? Well, and to find them, I usually just go to jobs.problogger.net. Um, I look for people who are bloggers. If they're not a blogger, I don't want them as an editor. Reason being is they won't know how to adjust the content and modify it and, you know, fine tune it. Because if you can't write, you're not able to fine tune. And then what I do is I tend not to hire someone as an editor first. I like working with them on blog articles. Once they do a good job and I find that they're really organized, on time, no excuses, they plan ahead, then I consider hiring them. I usually do it on a per post basis. Uh, my quick sprout, uh, lady that I use, she's amazing. I don't want to give her name cause I used to give her name and now too many people hit her up. You know, when, when you're looking for an editor per post basis and you can typically pay them like anywhere from, you know, a cent per word or five, 10 cents per word. It varies. Um, five, 10 cents is on the high end. I usually do like a flat rate. If I have three posts a week, I may end up paying them like 750 to a thousand dollars a month just to give you a rough idea. Wait, say that again. What's the hourly? Uh, and so I, I don't really like breaking it down hourly. Yeah. A lot of them try to charge me per word uh -huh. and I've had anywhere from a few cents per word up to 10 cents. Yeah. I tend to just do a flat rate and the flat rate usually is like, 
you know, don't pay more than, let's say, if you're doing around three posts, it ranges a lot. But if you're getting like 750 or 1,000 for three posts a week, 500 on the low end, but somewhere in that range, 1,500 a month max if you're doing three posts a week. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's the thing. I, like, I, there's one time where I, I lost my shirt basically because uh, it was uncapped, you know, based on number of words. And then, you know, you're, you're just ultimately at the end of the day, uh, I, I think I ended up paying like four or five grand for that month. And then, you know, I dialed it back and said, hey, you know, we can continue with the hourly. The hourly is about 45 bucks uh, right now. And then, uh, you know, there's a cap, you know, maybe the cap's at like 1500, like Neil mentioned. Uh, and then you can, you can go from there. But that's a good place to start. And then eventually, I think if things really start to take off for you and you want to take it in-house, then yes, by all means, hire someone full-time uh, and bring it in-house because you're going to ultimately have more control. So Neil, anything else? No, that's it for mine. All right, so that's it for today and we'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.